Hey everyone, it's Byron again, here to testify for Jesus Christ. Um, concerning myself right now with false teaching and how people are leading people astray, uh, it's very critical here. We're at the we're at the end, man. I mean, you know, if you have wrong doctrine at this point, there's going to be things coming down the road that are going to be totally shocking to you. You're going to see things happen that people told you would not happen in your life, um, and they're going to happen. And you know, if you live in the United States, terrible times, terrible times are ahead for the United States and then the world, especially for Christians in the United States. Um, a lot of persecution is coming. There are people, whether they're doing it intentionally or what I would refer to as honestly, there are people misleading people. And this can happen in two ways. One, a person can be just intentionally doing it which I know what I'm teaching is wrong, but I'm going to trick them into believing it. But then there's other people who have been taught wrong by people who are tricking them. And they regurgitate, or they, <laughs> that's gross, but they, they say, here's the truth, when in fact, they don't even know the truth themselves, but they think they do. Um, let's go to Ephesians. Jesus Christ died, paid the price, was buried, descended into the depths of the earth, ascended upon high, and filled all things. Starting at verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 4. Filled all things. Then he gave gifts. And he gave gifts to the people. I'm going to read all the way through 14. I'm getting down to the slight of men. Because these people that are intentionally doing that, they're doing it, uh, it's like a card game where they use sleight of hand, they're doing it with it's the sleight of men. They're tricking people into believing wrong doctrines. Here, here's the way the, it reads. Ephesians 4, starting at verse 11. And he, meaning Christ, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. The reason he did so, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive okay it talks about speaking the truth in love, and that's a struggle that I have. <laughs> I get frustrated when I when I know somebody is teaching wrong. I get very frustrated. This particular uh, video right here, I'm going to use another person's video in it, um, and I'm going to read. Um, and I want to I'm going to make sure I, I when I use a portion of this video, I want you to understand this person is attempting to paraphrase scripture. I don't want to make light of the fact he's trying to paraphrase scripture. That's that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show even if he got it 100% right, the scripture that he's attempting to paraphrase, even if 100% right, is wrong. Okay? Um, I'm going to play a clip by this guy who calls himself Pastor Tim Henderson. And in there, he's going to make a statement, and I'll play it now. So in Luke 21, I believe it's verse 36, where Jesus says something to the effect of pray that you will be strong enough to stand or to endure all the things that are going to come. Some translations, especially paraphrases, put it this way, to endure the horrors and, and we know the wrath that is to come. Okay, he just stated what Luke 26, excuse me, Luke 21, verse 36 states. And I want to read to you what Luke 21, verse 36 reads uh, from the King James Version. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. As you can see, and I'll, I'll instead of boring you with playing it back and forth here in the video, um, you can run it back. Um, maybe I'll even put the time to run it back to 
so you can hear it again. But you can see that neither, no matter what you do, you can't make those two verses sound the same. The King James Version one says, pray that you'll be counted worthy. And the other one has to do with pray that you'll be strong enough to endure what's coming. King James says, pray that you'll be counted worthy to escape. That rhymes with the Church of Philadelphia in Revelation. So, you, you sit there and you wonder, well, Byron, what's the big deal? First of all, what the big deal is, is that it's being proposed as scripture and it's not, or at least it doesn't come close to the King James. And what happened? Well, the King James Bible, as well as 14 other Bibles, they are uh, translated from a text called the Textus Receptus or the Received Text. And that was the Received Text or what was received by the majority to be the correct text back in the timing of the, the King James Version Bible. Let's say the 1500s, something like that. 90% of all the Greek text in the world at the time um, matched up. And then there was another 10% that didn't match. So the King James Version, the Tyndall Bible, um, various other ones in the early days uh, came directly from 90%, a match of 90% of the Greek documents that were available at the time and received as truth. There's another 10% of Greek documents out there that I can't tell you specifically what was done with them. But I can tell you that there were some guys named Westcott and Hort who were atheists and very questionable who put together their text and the new, the NIV Bible comes from their text. You can go to Daniel in the NIV Bible and see that when they were in the fiery furnace, um, Nebuchadnezzar says, there's one in there that looked like the son of the gods, plural gods. King James Version would say, um, son of God. So there's, there's some strange things, but what's, what the slight, I'm sorry, I'm putting this shadow in front of my face, where the slight of man comes in is that when Tim Henderson states the paraphrase, he states that Jesus said this. So as he states, Jesus said this, or words to these effect, and I'll play it again. So in Luke 21, I believe it's verse 36, where Jesus says something to the effect of pray that you will be strong enough to stand or to endure all the things that are going to come. Some translations, especially paraphrases, put it this way, to endure the horrors, and, and we know the wrath that is to come. What you actually have is a man saying that Jesus said something that cannot be found in but 10% or less of the Greek documents that existed in the world in the 15, 1600s. And there would be even less of those documents available today. So he he's saying Jesus said something that didn't appear in 90% of the Greek text, but it appeared in what at best would be 10% and at worst wouldn't even exist in the, the text. So the slide of man is that he is actually telling you something that Jesus said. It's not, it's not close. So you end up working or arguing a whole full complete argument about Bible things with the assumption that you're dealing with the word of God and you're not. The whole argument exists from fiction or from at least what one might say was 10% of the text at the time. And now you have all these translations of the Bible out here from these flawed texts or these minority texts or whatever. And I'm not even sure that can be proved that they're from there. So 
watch how people say things. They will tell you the Bible says something and you're inclined to believe it when you have all these different Bibles out here that say different things. So you have to know <clears throat> which Bible are you referring to, where was that Bible translated from, and where is the Greek word proof that proves that particular English word matches somewhat closely to what was intended by the Greek word. And you know, when you start looking for proof, uh, you find out that if they're not dealing with the Textus Receptus documents, such as the Strong's Concordance information, um, it's some elusive stuff out there. So that anybody could come along and say anything that Jesus said, as Tim did right here. He says Jesus said it, and he's talking about paraphrased Bibles and all this stuff. Well, you see my point. Don't let somebody trick you into listening to them state Jesus said something when all they're doing is stating something that might have been said. That's my point. You know, can you imagine when, when, when you get to the verse that says all scriptures can be used for reproof? And you get to a point where you realize there's two scriptures that are in contrast to each other. And then you start looking into it and you realize the one that you've been reading isn't even in a Greek document anywhere that can be proved. It's just fabricated. So there's, there's where we're at. Man. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks.